Hello everyone, welcome to The Novelist. I would describe the game in my own words, but as usual, the official description is better, so I will simply read it. The Novelist asks one central question. Can you achieve your dreams without pushing away the people you love? The game focuses on Dan Kaplan, a novelist struggling to write the most important book of his career, while trying to be the best husband and father he can be. The Kaplans have come to, remote, to a remote coastal home for the summer, unaware that they're sharing the house with a mysterious ghostly presence. You. Read the family's thoughts, explore their memories, uncover their desires and intervene in their lives, but stay out of sight. You can't help the Kaplans if they know there's a ghost in the house. It's up to you to decide how Dan's career and family life will evolve, but choose carefully. There are no easy answers, and every choice has a cost. So there you have it. The Novelist is available on the official website, as well as Steam, so I'll have links to all of that in the description. So this is the perfect kind of game for me. Absolutely perfect. It's kind of an adventure game, kind of a, like an interactive fiction, I guess you could say. And it takes place within, as far as I know, this one home. Which is great, because to me, one of the most fun things to do in a game is exploring someone's home. There's something about it that is just incredibly engaging. Because there's so much, so much of a, a character, a person's life can be seen in, in their home and their home life, just the things that they keep around them, their living space, the, the things they own. There's something very engaging about it. So as usual, my play style is to take my time. I'm a, I'm a smell the roses kind of player, so I'm gonna go nice and slow and just absorb everything. I also like to analyze and think about the games that I play, so I will probably be doing that throughout, especially towards the end. And that's about, that's almost it. Let's, let's get going. There's one more thing, but you'll see in just a second. Are you sure you want to start a new game? Yes. Okay, here's the one last thing I need to talk about. So, there's two different difficulty settings for this game. And they're not normal or hard, like you might normally see. Instead, they're stealth or story. So with stealth, the Kaplans will be able to see you, so stay out of sight. Uh, because you are a ghost. So in this case, you can actually be seen. Which can... Uh, which will influence the amount of influence you have over the story. If they see you, you lose out the ability to have some influence in what happens. And then there's the story mode where they won't be able to see you. Okay, so I read a review for The Novelist, and it basically sounded like the stealth mode is kind of just half-baked and not very interesting. It's a, It sounded like it was an unnecessarily gamey thing that was kind of shoved in, and didn't really belong, and it kind of just detracted from the rest of the game and just kind of wasted your time. So I was leaning towards just going with story mode, and uh, just to be sure though, I played a little bit of the game, five or ten minutes, I just played through the tutorial, and I played in stealth mode. So I did have to hide, and they're totally right. I, I don't like stealth mode, I think it's just a waste of my time, it distracts from the rest of the game, it's totally unnecessary, it's not even very fun, so... I'm going to go with story mode. I don't know if that's common. I don't know if most people went with stealth or if most people went with story, but it's definitely the best fit for me. So that is what I will do. Would you like to play through a brief tutorial? No thanks. Writer's block. More time to paint. I believe I can press tab to see what I need to do. Yeah, search the house and his memories for more clues. Alright. So there's Dan, and there's Linda, and then there's Tommy. Husband, wife, and son. Well, I don't need to stay inside of this fixture. So yeah, if you're in... Um, you can possess light fixtures. And if you're playing in stealth mode, we have to actually avoid them. That's what you want to do to remain undetected. 
However, since I'm in story mode, there's really no reason to use them other than as a simple shortcut to be able to get somewhere very quickly. Which actually is quite handy. But yes. Little Tommy won't be able to see me. <laughs> uh. I think I can hear his thoughts too, yeah. Space Explorer memories. Or no, 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 that's not... That's not your thoughts. No, that's actually Explorer's memories. Okay, let's um, let's just look around the house to begin with before we start going into anybody's memories. Let's get a feel for the place. Again, that's one of my most favorite things to do is just look around someone's home. And when accompanied by this wonderful, relaxing music, although it's, it kind of leans more towards depressing to me, especially given the context of a family struggling to, you know, stay happy. It's kind of depressing, but it's also kind of relaxing. So this is a summer home. Wonderful, wonderful view. Just here, I'll just stay put. Look at that. Beautiful view. Tommy, did you have to ruin the moment with your rocket sounds? Did you have to? What are you thinking? Maybe we can play later. Also, a nice little detail they've added into the game, which I really like, since you're a ghost, is if you notice, if you look closely, your view is actually bobbing up and down very slowly, very gently. Almost like a wave. It really helps you feel like you're actually... Actually a, a spirit of some sort. And he's done. He has a very short attention span. I'm not exactly sure what year this is set in, but it must be pretty damn old. That's right, the year is pretty old. I don't even know what that means, it's not even a proper sentence. But uh, this is certainly an old TV. Ooh, there's a letter. Pick up more canvases. Art store anywhere in town. Galleries or studios. Okay, so it looks like someone is a painter. Or an artist. Linda, one of three clues found. Oh, so it must be Linda, that's the artist. So yeah, they've just moved to a summer home. So... They must be trying to, you know, feel out the local... Uh, stores and what kind of things are actually around them. Looks like she doesn't even know if she can get canvases around here. Or if there's any galleries or studios. Art store anywhere in town? Wonder how big the nearest town is. Might be quite small. I'm gonna possess this light because I can. Ah. Oh, it's so cute. It's a little bit of wood. Wait a minute. Wood. But, wait, is there a fireplace? That's kind of what wood's for. Is, is there a fireplace? I don't see one. Is that someone typing? Oh, it's above. That must be, um... That must be Dan typing away in his typewriter. Yeah, there, there isn't a fireplace. How strange. Anyway, let's go back and take a look at the photos. Family portrait. Looks like a really depressing photo in the center there. Looks like it's of Dan. Hello, Linda. Just in front of a river, maybe? That's just a nature scene, landscape photo? I'm not exactly sure what you call it. <gasps> Is there something actually on the TV? Aww. Hi, Mom. Hey, honey. I wanted to watch. What are you thinking? Can still make it work. I hope she's not talking about their marriage. She might be. So much time to paint. Probably a great place to get inspiration for painting as well. With this view, I mean, look at this. Ah. What are you thinking, Tommy? Daddy said he'd be my buddy here. Paul, good to hear from you. Listen. 
Things are taking a little longer than expected. I feel good about this one, but I haven't quite brought some of the threads together. It's just an execution hiccup, not a lack of ideas. This is the most complicated book I've ever tried to write, and let's just say I have a newfound respect for guys like Dickens and Joyce who can juggle ten threads at once without getting lost. I'm figuring some of this stuff out the hard way, I guess you could say. Anyway, the outline I sent you is still good, those are still the beats, those are still the themes I plan to explore. I'll keep you posted, Dan. Something. I think he was just, I think that was Dan upstairs just grumbling. So yeah, he's obviously having trouble writing the book, hence the title of this, I guess, chapter, writer's block. I just want to keep looking outside and listening to this beautiful music. Ah. <sighs> but no. Let's look around. The hum of the fridge. Having fun? Whiskey. Yeah. Ogburn whiskey. Well, that'll do for inspiration. Clear his writer's block with some drunkenness. I'm sure that's a healthy behavior, right? Fishing bowls. Anything in the bathroom? Nope. Ah, she's painting. Whoops, I just explored his memories. Didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Oh, I'll come back to that later. Before I explore them, let's just take a look around at all this stuff. It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt a buzz right away. So much time to work. I haven't had a space like this in forever, probably since I left the studio. I went straight into a new piece today, got lost, looked up to see it was two hours later. I think this new one has promise, though I still have some rust to shake off. Speaking of which, I'm going to go check on Dan and see if his new office is doing anything for him. He's pretty frustrated, but he has to figure something out soon, or this place won't be any different than home. Hmm. I wonder why she stopped painting. Alright, so yeah, it looks like Dan was trying to find inspiration by going to a different place. What are you painting? Oh, she's only just started. Focus and just Tommy, was that supposed to be a car sound? Because if it wasn't, you're really, really... <laughs> that, that's not even close to a car sound. Try again, Tommy. Or you can give up. Or you can... What? You have a lot of toys. <sighs> that just flash? I, oh yeah, I can read it. What is that? Some sort of a board game, I think. But what? It looks vaguely familiar, but... I'm not sure. Hey, honey, what you doing? Blasting off. <laughs> they actually look happy there. Let's go upstairs. Oh, yeah, paintings. Boats. Oh, yeah, I just realized these are probably from Linda, right? Unless they're supposed to be photos. No, they're probably from Linda. That makes sense. There he is, yeah. Just typing something up. Apparently he's done. Writer's block. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. That was the first line. 
Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help, or a long drive, or a drink. Well, looks like the new place is not working. Paul said Grof Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Wonder what exactly that is. I know writers often get advances, right? Would they maybe just... C can you take the advance back? I guess that maybe that depends on the contract. Maybe they just would cancel the deal and... The advance would be the only thing he would get. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But obviously, bad things would happen. Two or three clues found. Yeah, he's been trying to type stuff, but just keeps tossing it away. It's no good. Man, this view, though. Such a beautiful view. Look at this forest, these trees. They're immense. Checkers? Chess? Chinese checkers. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Any ideas? Well, at least typing something. That's probably good. It's almost time to start exploring memories, but a little bit more to check out. How are things? Is school still taking up all of your time, or is anything new going on? We've been up here for a week or so, and I can already tell it's going to be great for painting. There are hardly any distractions, and this house has a room they called the conservatory in the brochure, which really just means it has a lot of windows. Whatever they call it, it's a great space for working. The second floor blocks most of the northern light, but I'll manage. I took Tommy down to the beach today, and you should have seen how excited he was. I wish I'd brought my camera. He kept looking back up at the house like he couldn't believe it was so small from down there. He seems to have taken to this place really well so far, which is such a load off our minds. We didn't know what to expect, but so far, so good. Anyway, let me know how things are going. Yours, Linda. Three of three, three of three clues found for Linda. Ideas. Alice listens in on the phone. Oh, it's ideas for his book. It's got to be. Alice listens in on the phone call. Problem. Ruined sympathy for Alice. Solvable? Probably not. Too cheap plus easy. Seen at the lake. Alice sees them there. Could definitely work. Comeuppance for Scott. Alice stays innocent. Sarah sees who Scott really is. Yeah, I think that works. Hmm. Well, at least, at least he's not completely run dry. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I hope this reaches you before you leave for the summer. I know we went over this in my office, but I think Tommy is a wonderful child, and I'll feel better putting my recommendation in writing. Children develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder. So the most important thing is to be patient and supportive. Make sure he does his reading exercises each day in a calm, loving environment. Make sure not to show disappointment when he struggles, which he will at first. Show encouragement when he succeeds, as self-confidence is critical at this age. If he fails to make progress with the exercises I've included, you may want to take him to the local pediatrician for further recommendations. I hope this is of some help. I look forward to seeing Tommy this September. Mrs. McMillan. Hmm. Children develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder. So it looks like they think he might have a learning disorder, but they're not sure. And they're doing some things to help him, and hopefully raise his skills and the things he's having trouble with.
Okay, I think the only thing I'm missing is one clue for Tommy. Hey, honey. Hey, mommy. Oh, yeah, I haven't been in here. It's gotta be this. Well, that's sad. <laughs> He's just behind his dad while his dad is just frustrated over not being able to ride anything. Neither of them are happy in that drawing. Grayson Roger. I don't even know if that's a real game. Alright. It is now time to start exploring some people's memories. I think everyone's downstairs. Yeah, they are. Let's see who taught me first. Okay, so when you're in this mode, you need to listen for the sounds, and you'll find, I, I guess, mem yeah, you'll find memories. Like right here, you can hear it coming from the left. We'll have to find out. Are there any other kids? Oh. Are there any other kids? We'll have to find out. Guess he's wondering if there's anyone to play with, and they don't know. I wonder where the nearest home is. I mean, I can't see a single one from here. I hear another one. Somewhere over here. I think it's upstairs. Yeah, it's upstairs. In his room? Aww. Yet another depressing drawing of him and his dad. I think that's the last one. It's it's silent. Yeah. And then. Okay. Take a look at Linda. Actually, let's read her thoughts. No distractions here, just us. Oh no, no, don't move. Oh, I can explore her memories even if she's walking. I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said the word yet, but I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real. A thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start. I meant it. I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Trying to keep it together for the sun? Trying to make sure he doesn't know anything's wrong. Trying to do a new start. How often does that actually work out? Yep, the word divorce. Certainly brings up memories. My parents divorced when I was pretty young. Let's just say it wasn't fun. I promise. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Promising to make a new start? I think that was the last one. Yeah. Alright, where did you go, Dan? Probably upstairs to right. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, maybe if I... Hold on, let's read his thoughts first. Be different than before. It has to. Is that... Is that like right before his thoughts that I just heard? Like it has to be different than before? Or is he... Res no, wait, hold on. Do you think coming here will help? Oh no, it's a response to that. It has to. It has to. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking. Did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, Great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? Hmm. I think... I think that's everything, isn't it? Read their thoughts for the final clue. Where's my notebook? I know I had something good. Oh, yeah. I know where it is. I guess he lost it, that good idea. Do I have to go find it? Okay. Oh, whoops. Does that work? Can I go find it? And, like, do something with... Select the notebook. Well, hold on, let's, um... Let's go do the same thing with everyone else. Oh, whoops. Hey, Mommy. Hey, honey. Me and Daddy can play Race and Roger. I know exactly where that is. We could have a bottle of wine and hang out like we used to. More time to paint? Oh, is that... That's my decision, isn't it? <sighs> I have to decide one of three, right? Hmm. Maybe. Focus and just don't... Tommy obviously wants to play with his dad more. And Linda, of course. Well... Linda and Dan's relationship is not doing too well. They could certainly use the bonding. And Dan could certainly use some more ideas for his book. Hmm. Maybe I should have kept playing the tutorial, because I didn't actually get to this point, but I'm almost certain that's what I'm supposed to do. Pick one of three. Unless I can do all of them, but I doubt it. Okay. Okay, that worked. Here's what I'm gonna... Okay, here's what I'm gonna go with for now. Um, his relationship with his family is more important than his book and if him and Linda are happy that's going to hopefully lead to a, a nice and good environment for Tommy so I'm going to go with the wine we could have a bottle of wine and hang out like we used to Selecting wine will choose Linda's resolution for this chapter. Dan and Tommy will be disappointed. However, if you've discovered Dan or Tommy's desired outcome, you'll be able to compromise with one of them in the next chapter. Find a compromise. Hmm. Interesting. You'll be able to find a compromise with one of them in the next chapter. I wonder how. But anyway, let's go ahead. Okay, what is this? Everything's... Oh, press tab to view available compromises. 
Explore the house, then whisper your choice to Dan. You may also find a compromise with an additional character if you wish. Oh, so I have to choose one. Is that it? I can hear the crickets. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to go with Race and Roger. I'm going to go with Family Over Work. Read. Is that, that's a notebook. I Wait. Is that the notebook? No. It's new. What is this doing here? From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 15th, 1948. Mr. Lowry finally gave in and agreed to let me inspect the house. I believe he simply grew tired of hearing me ask, although I think deep down he knows I'm correct. A property like this simply doesn't change hands every year or two without a reason. I noticed the pattern when I was cleaning out old flies. Uh, old flies. <laughs> old flies. Cleaning out old flies. What does that even mean? Cleaning out old files. <laughs> and this house kept coming up. It's changed owners seven times in the past 13 years. I began digging, and not a single one of the sales was financially motivated. People just seem to keep deciding that they'd rather live somewhere else. Which doesn't add up in my mind. The view is striking. The isolation and privacy alone make it a great property. The remoteness can't be an issue. Certainly no one who can afford this kind of home needs to work for money. It's a mystery. But that's why I'm here. So, I'm guessing the reason so many people keep selling is because there's a ghost. Which is me. Huh. I guess I was scaring away the other owners. But how? Just because they thought there was a ghost here? Because maybe they spotted me? Or was I messing with their lives in very bad ways? I wonder why that was here in this sequence, but not there before. Now I want to know if there's more. Oh, right, we're, yeah, we're at nighttime. I guess this is... The... How many sleeps? What? Other kids here. Yeah, they're all sleeping, so this must be the night of the decision the decision that I made. Well there's Race and Roger, but hold on, let's look let's look around first. Ideas for a second one. Just one idea. So that's their thoughts that just keep popping up as they sleep. Okay, that's the notebook, so this is new. From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 16th, 1948. Standing in the kitchen drinking coffee and admiring the view, I simply don't understand it. Who wouldn't want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of five, uh, 451 Timberline Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house furnished. It was just about as quiet as anywhere I've ever been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finish breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. Later. I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy when I saw something odd downstairs. I'm not certain I can describe what it was. And I've already talked myself halfway out of thinking it was anything at all. It was probably just a trick of the light coming through those big windows. Okay. So yeah, people have definitely seen me about. And that's why so many people have left. They've gotten, they've gotten spooked. Alright, well it's race and roger time. New house is cool. It is pretty cool. 
Never mind that there's a creepy ghost standing over you as you sleep. Actually, I don't know if ghosts can really stand. Depends, do I have legs? Probably not. I seem to be floating. Choose, we'll choose Tommy's compromise for this chapter. You can only select one compromise per chapter. Yep, let's do it. I'm sorry, Dan, but I'm going to sacrifice your writing. Okay, what now? Explore the house, then whisper your choice to Dan. My choice? My choice of what? Space to whisper. Can I... I can only whisper to him, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. The next night, Dan surprised Linda by grabbing a bottle of wine and asking her if she wanted to drink it and catch up after they got Tommy into bed. They put on their favorite Miles Tanner record and cuddled on the couch, laughing and catching up on things before stumbling to bed. The summer was off to a good start for them. Dan knew it was important to start the summer off on a good foot with Tommy, but he couldn't find time to play as long as Tommy wanted. He knocked off early enough to sneak in two games, and he made sure to let Tommy win both. But his son was disappointed that they hadn't had more time together. Dan couldn't get past his writer's block. He laid awake for three nights trying to think of a way out of, this, of his jam, but he couldn't come up with one. He had to stay on schedule, so he forced himself to write a scene just to keep moving. He hated each word as he typed it, but he had no choice. The Inheritance Dan got a letter with some surprise. <laughs> so it's kind of starting to write out the story of what's going to happen in this chapter, isn't it? That's really cool. I like what they've done. Okay, so I see what's happening. I'm supposed to whisper my... Um, I, I influence people by whispering to them in the night. But then the next day they do whatever I... Basically, whatever I told them to do. Interesting. Whether your child enjoys arts and crafts, swimming, sports, recreation, singing, or exploring, they're sure to have a ball at Camp Emerald Lake. We know that every family has unique needs, and we strive to be as flexible as possible. Daily, weekly, and monthly packages are available in both sleepover and pickup options. Our lifeguards are fully certified, and every counselor is trained in the cutting-edge cardiopulmonary resuscitation technique. Our goal is fun, but our priority is safety. The enclosed brochure contains information on all of the exciting opportunities at Camp Emerald Lake. We're sure you'll find many things to like, and we hope to see your child soon. I guess I think of sending Tommy to uh, this camp. There's Race and Roger. They did have their game out here, didn't they? Maybe that's why it's here, because they played with it here and then just put it away. I wonder if the actions you do affect the items and stuff that you find around the house. Painting coming along? I think so. Thanks, yeah. I got up. Have to make sure no one here bullies Tommy. Yeah, it sounds like he's been bullied before. From that note I read on the table. <laughs> Is it that funny, Dan? Is it really that funny? I don't know. It was an okay joke. Oh. That's Tommy actually happy. Playing with someone. Playing with someone here? Or is that from wherever he was before? An old friend or a new friend? And now the wine's gone. Hey, Mom. 
Molly. Hey, pumpkin. Dan, I hope you're doing well. I got this address from your father. I hope it's correct. I'll get to the point. When your cousin Richard passed away last year, we just Oh, this is that uh, le letter. But Dan was talking about that. He was su surprising news. Yeah, when your cousin Richard passed away last year, we discovered that his pipe business had done very well. He wasn't wealthy, but he was very comfortable. At the execution of his will, we were somewhat surprised to find that he wished to distribute his estate among all living blood relatives. He reserved the alliance share for his immediate family, as I'm sure you'll understand. But there was a portion allotted to you as well. Enclosed is a check for the full amount. I trust you will honor his memory by putting it to good use. Uncle Wayne. Oh. Hey, check this out. Have fun? That is quite nice. It maybe I mean it depends how much um how much it was, but maybe the book deal can go through. Maybe he can fail on the book. And they'll be okay. Maybe they have enough money saved up. Maybe it's not the end of the world. See other styles. Why are the houses so far apart? Oh, she's completing it. Oh, it's a bird in a cage. Which actually kind of makes me think of me in this game, because I'm kind of caged inside of this house. But now I'm thinking, me the ghost. Am I stuck here? Am I unable to leave? Like, is my spirit bound to this house? Hmm. Oh, there's that kid again. It's nice to see some happy drawings from Tommy. I called the co-op today. It isn't wildly expensive, but it sure doesn't fit into the budget. It was a bigger letdown than I thought, not being able to just sign up on the spot. It gets so lonely here sometimes. And I think Tommy's starting to feel it too. We try to play with him every day, and the woods here are pretty magical for someone his age. But kids need to be around other kids sometimes. He can only play with his cars so often. Sometimes I wish there were actual neighbors here. The only friend he's made is Davy, but seeing them at the park once in a while isn't the same as having someone to pal around with every day. It's summer vacation, and he's pretty much all alone. Yeah, with it being summer vacation, he's got nothing to do. He really likes race cars, doesn't he? He's even got one on his backpack. Hmm. The Literary Register, May edition. Inside, the Books of Summer. Adam... I don't know how to pronounce his last name. The Interview. America's top small-run publishers. <laughs> Apparently that's something he reads often. Because that's what he was... What was it? That's what he uh, dreamt about? Like the headlines being about how he had basically had writer's block? <laughs> Runs out of steam, or whatever it said. Dan, I looked into it, and the guy at the literary register said that pre-release ads do drive up pre-order quite a bit. It's his job to sell ads, of course, so we have to take that with a grain of salt. I usually leave this kind of thing to the guys in the marketing department, so I'm a little out of my depth here, but I checked with them and they said the same thing. So it seems like the ads would make sense, if the book is good. You don't want to oversell and underdeliver. I have to say, this is the first time I've had a writer offer to pay for extra marketing. You sure about it? There aren't any refunds if the book tanks. You've got some drive, though, coming up with an idea like this. I'll give you that. Think about it and let me know. Paul. Ooh, that is a dangerous thing to do. Pay for your own marketing. 
Unless you're absolutely sure what you have is damn good, that seems far too dangerous. That just does not seem worth it. Hey, babe. Hey, you. I see you there, Shoes. Are you trying to hide from me? You were over there last time, now you're under. Maybe there's another ghost in this house, one that moves shoes. Anne, I'm going to cut right through the pleasantries and ask you, who is this Ryan that Mom mentioned on the phone? Someone new? Are you trying to keep it a secret, or did it just slip your mind the last time we talked? Spill it! Things here are moving along, I guess. When we came up, I thought it would be great to have more dedicated time to paint, but I didn't realize it would be so isolating. I miss having more people around and having new ideas floating about. I got lucky in town last week, though. I found an artist co-op called Makeshift, and it seems really interesting. It's not too big, but there are lots of different types of artists there. I'll probably call and try to get more details. I don't remember if I told you this, but I've been thinking about going back to painting full time. Anyway, enough about me. Tell me what's up with you. Love, Linda. So she's getting really lonely up here, which really isn't surprising. It is very isolated, which is both good in some ways and bad. I guess it depends on your personality. Some people are fine with isolation, others are not. Spend three paragraphs describing the weather. That can work. If the weather's important, why not? I only met Rick once at a family reunion that must have been, what, 15 years ago? Turns out he made his fortune by, get this, selling high-end pipes. The Sherlock Holmes kind, not the plumbing kind. He must have been a hell of an interesting guy. I mean, he found a niche and made his way in the world. You have to respect that. It makes me wonder, am I giving everything I have to this book or am I leaving myself an out? It isn't announced yet. I could always pull the plug. I'd never get another advance again, sure, but there isn't a gun to my head. Unless I put one there. M metaphorically, of course. Well, not necessarily metaphorically. Well, no, it still would be metaphorically. I'm thinking the metaphorical gun to his head would be the marketing. If he pays for that marketing, he's invested. I'm going to say no. Don't do it. Check out this one. That's okay. what I'm thinking at the moment. Hold on. Have I found everything? There's something more from Tommy. Where have I not been? Hey, buddy. Where have I not been? I feel like I've been everywhere. I mean, I saw that. There's more. <laughs> Apparently Tommy's enjoyment of the TV show is short last, uh, short lived. Here we go. What? What are you even talking about, Tommy? <laughs> Apparently Dan's enjoyment of the show is also short lived. Apparently everyone in this house has a very short attention span. What'd you say, Tommy? Psh. Play Racing Roger. Play Racing Roger longer. Psh. What am I missing from Tommy? Psh. Blast off. Hmm. Hey, 
It's like a... It's like a serious backpack there. I guess there's probably a lot of hiking opportunities out here. Oh, it's gotta be that. Can you take Tommy out today? Maybe to the beach? I think you could both use some fresh air. I have to be in town by noon, and I probably won't be back till four. Lynn. Alright, Dan, let's enter your memories. Don't joke like that. And when I finish my book in December, I... Don't joke like that. Joke like what? What What was his joke? And when I finish my book in December, I... Hmm. Maybe the other part of his memory will clear that up. Writer's block turned into writer's fog or something like that. I never found my notebook. I guess it's just gone. Did we lose it in the move? Leave it at home? I ended up having Alice find out about Scott and Sarah by overhearing a phone call. That's awful. Having Alice eavesdrop on them completely kills the sympathy I've been trying to build for her. What a junk solution. But I had to get something down and move on. I guess that was it. Hopefully I can come back and fix it later. Well, he went with a bad solution that he had come up with in the notebook. Ooh. If I keep going with the family over his book, he's going to be very unsatisfied with his work. He's not going to be happy with it. Is there something out there? The entire world's out there. Yeah, she's definitely feeling really isolated. Where's he? I hear it. it. Must be above. I knew we should have eaten something with that wine last night. My head is killing me. It was totally worth it, though. We put on some music and hung out on the couch, all cuddled up like we were freshmen again. He didn't talk about his book once. We got a little too into a discussion about whose favorite band from college was still the best, and we accidentally woke Tommy up. We got him settled back down and decided to call it a night, too. Well, except for... I better not write about that part. <laughs> It's just... I already played with it. What about your rocket? I already played with it. Hmm. He's getting sick of his toys. And why wouldn't he? I mean, he's on summer vacation. He has nothing to do all day but play. You're going to need a lot of toys to play with if you're not going to get bored with them. <sighs> Sad. Again. Look at this one, Mommy. Nicely done, honey. Bring my kite to the camp Mommy told me about. Throw some gear in my painter bag and take it to the co-op. Want to get something to eat in a little bit? That sounds great. Send Paul an example. Add from the literary register. Hi, Dad. Hey, buddy. We are certainly... Uh, I'm sorry, but we're certainly not... Not going to be going with your ad idea or putting money into the book because you're having trouble with it. Dan's having trouble with it. 
if he puts if he invests even more into it, then there's more to lose. No, just <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. Now I'm gonna go with um Yeah, I'm gonna go with the bag. She really needs to be around other people. She really wants to hey, be around other artists. Hey, honey. At the co-op. Yeah, let's do it. I right, take a look around at the new stuff and then the compromise is going to be with the kite for Tommy. From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 17th, 1948. I'm now certain there's something strange with the light here. It must be those windows. I was reviewing old deeds in the living area and saw some sort of flash of light out of the corner of my eye. I would assume the elevation would put the ocean too far away for the sun to reflect off a wave, but perhaps not. I looked, but there was nothing there except a strange shimmer, like heat above the asphalt of a hot road. It dissipated almost immediately. Perhaps some concentration of the light caused it. But on to work. I've begun cataloging possible options for the property. I owe Mr. Lowry a report by the 24th. I like how you discover these reports on what's going on with the house and the investigation only at night when everything's all very gray and just black and white. It makes it feel kind of mysterious. Especially with the kind of eerie music. From the desk of Harold Baxter, January 19th, 1948. I failed to log my activities yesterday, as nothing of note occurred. There have been no tricks of the light for two days, and I've grown certain that the ones I saw were reflections from the ocean improbably reaching the house. I've been able to focus on the task at hand and am suitably pleased with the condition of the property. I've also reached a decision on how to proceed. It came to me this morning as I stood in the conservatory admiring the beauty of the forest. I hadn't begun my work yet, and was thinking of nothing in particular, when an idea came into my head fully formed. I was surprised that it appeared with such clarity, but it's not unheard of for the mind to ponder a question in the subconscious. As for the idea, it is quite simple. I will buy the house myself. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Oh no, 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 no. I didn't re oh. Press escape to continue playing. Yeah, let's not do that. I didn't mean to do that. I just saw something flash up and I pressed it, just hoping to read it. Is there something in here? Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, let's go do the kite and then whisper to Dan. What's an emerald? Linda was thrilled when Dan told her about the inheritance money and offered to use it for the co-op instead of promoting his book. She started working two days a week in town, and it was all she'd hoped it would be. 
She made friends with a few local painters and learned new techniques from them, but simply being around creative people each week did her the most good. And Dan knew that while he couldn't also pay for Tommy to go to camp, it was important for him to have more playtime with other children his age. So he called up Davy's parents and arranged regular playdates at the playground in town. He tried to make the trip himself as often as possible, and it made a difference for Tommy. Dan decided not to place the ad, and deep down he felt like he was giving himself a vote of no confidence. It was subtle, but he knew that regardless of the book's current state, he had apprehensions about being able to finish it the way he wanted, so he hedged his bets. He couldn't shake the lack of confidence for days, and his writing stumbled. <laughs> 